All right, folks, so in this chapter, we're going to talk about power supplies. So, um, obviously, power supplies come in all kinds of different wattages, all right? And uh, there are quite a few calculators out there online that can kind of help you decide which uh, power supply that you need, all right? So, in this video, we're only going to talk about uh, ATX style. This video is not really going to help you, and let me move these motherboards out of the way. It's not going to help you with a power supply like this. This is uh, out of an HP gaming computer, and uh, it's a different size power supply. So we're not we're not really going to talk about that. But I put that there uh, just as a demonstration. So you've got to understand um, what your end state is going to be. So maybe you're thinking of, uh, hey, I want to start more basic, uh, such as this computer. But in the end, I want something like this, all right? So uh, maybe that computer needs between 500, 550 watts. Maybe the end state of this computer is going to require 850 watts. Now, if I uh, start with the 550, then I've got to replace that power supply uh, to get to this point. So knowing what your end state is, in uh, in my opinion, going in and Doing your calculations based on that uh, will spare you some headache later on. Uh, not that it's, you know, that impossibly difficult to um, swap out the power supply. It's just a lot easier doing it once, right? So, all right. So, other factors. Um, and we can get into all kinds of stuff. So, we're going to talk a little bit about CPUs. We're going to talk about graphics cards. And then we're going to talk about motherboards, all right? We'll look at the different connectors, um, at least what we have available. Now, there there may be other connectors out there, but, uh, you know, just what I have available is really what we're going to talk about. So, let's look at uh, this really basic EVGA 400 watt, which uh, this thing has, you know, really uh, most of the connectors that you would ever need to see. Um so let's talk about stuff that uh, is going to be on your motherboard. So right here we've got um, we've got these CPU connectors, okay? And uh, you'll see these either as a one by four, two by four, and if you have uh, some serious overclocking, you may see um, actually a third uh, set of four, okay? So I do have a motherboard here in front of us. Uh, I have three motherboards, and we're going to take a look at uh, all three of these scenarios, okay? So um, if I drag this over here. So here is your, uh, this is an H310M. This will support 8th and 9th gen. And, oh, that's one other thing to talk about. Really, since we're talking about building computers 2020, we ain't building no 7th gen. We ain't building 6th. We ain't building some old shit. All right, we're talking newer gen, Intel, uh, Risen 3000 series, all right? Now, so here is one CPU connector. Uh, that would plug in right here, uh, and you have to line these up correctly. There's a little uh, thing on there, but you would connect that right in there like that, okay? So this one uh, requires the less amount of power of uh, the three scenarios we're going to see. Now, this guy... You have uh, basically two by four uh, connector, okay? So um, this power supply would indeed work with that, right? We have enough power here to uh, power that. Now the crappy Apivia power supply that I brought uh, over here, this guy, if I can even find it, only has uh, one has a single one, okay? So this is gonna work with this motherboard. It's not gonna work with that one, okay? So that's something you need to be uh, aware of. Now, looking over here at our AMD X570, which allows extreme overclocking, this one actually has, and it's kinda of hard to see because the connector's in the way, this has three sets of them, okay? So if you wanna do extreme overclocking, these crappy power supplies ain't gonna get done right here, okay? You're gonna need something like the EVGA uh, 850BQ that I have. Now this is a uh, semi, 
modular power supply, meaning that uh, certain connectors will connect not only to the power supply um, and then obviously to the motherboard or the graphics card. Now, if uh, this was fully uh, hybrid or fully modular, uh, the power supply would also uh, uh, connect, have its own connections, um, things like that. So there would be a lot more of the connectors than you see in here. The ability to have, um, I believe it is either, uh, I believe it's up to 8x4, right? So I don't know if there's any motherboards out there that have that. So this one can support 3x4 uh, or 4x4, okay? So uh, that is uh, pretty impressive. Now, let's talk graphics cards, okay? So I basically got, uh, this is RTX 2070 something or 2070 Super. Uh, whichever one this is, you'll see on here, um, in this case, we have our GPU connectors, okay? So going back to our 400 watt example, and this is not going to be the power supply that you want to uh, power that graphics card, um, but I will show you this as an example. So what you have to be aware of is how many pins your graphics card needs okay so this guy actually has uh an eight plus a six okay so when this thing's all said and done it's not going to be enough power uh from the 400 watt but now the power supply by needs to have at least a four and a excuse me an eight and a six okay now there are some power supplies out there that require um, two eights. Let's see if this is an example here. Nope. This is a, uh, RX 5700s. It's also, uh, eight plus six. We have a, a GTX 1660Ti. This one only requires an eight pin connector. Okay. Some graphics cards don't require, um, the GPU connector. Okay. They're usually Things like a uh, GTX 1050, GTX 1050 Ti, GTX 1650, uh, GTX 750, and there's some there's some RX 550s, uh, 460. Certain ones uh, will actually require a GPU connector, and some get all their power from the uh, PCI Express slot, which is right here. Okay, that's where your graphics card goes in, and um, that is limited to about 75 watts, if I remember correctly. So, things to uh, watch out for, okay? If you need, um, if you actually need 8 plus 8, um, you've got to make sure that your power supply can handle that, okay? So, keep that in mind. All right, so I brought all these different CPUs out here, okay? Um, know that the wattage required by these is uh, not the same, okay? Now, this is an i3-9100. That's an i3-9350KF, all right? They're both i3s, but this one has the K in it, so it can be overclocked. This is going to draw more power. Um, I didn't bring the exact numbers with me. Maybe on the box. It would be nice if it was on the box, right? Yeah. I don't think it's on the box, but uh, this is like 60 some watts. This is like 92, uh, somewhere in that range. So realize this draws more power, okay? You've got these other processors here. The i9, that draws a lot of power, okay? And then we've got an i5, 9600K, and i7. So those these are both in the 90s. I think this is 135. Uh, don't quote me on that. Then you've got your Risens over here, right? These, uh, you know... They're, they're totally another story. I don't have them memorized what power supply or how much power they draw, but uh, that's something you've got to check out, right? You've got to know how much uh, power your CPU is going to demand. And once again, talking about end state, okay? If I buy the i3-9100, okay, that's not an i3-9100 there, but if I were to buy that, and later, I want to upgrade to the i9, okay, which there's actually an i9 behind that. I need to know that uh, 
my power supply is going to be good enough, right? So jumping from that I3 to the I9 is almost grabbing uh, probably twice as much watts, okay? So other things, wow, now I've got this big CPU cooler. I've got dual fans on there. I'm starting to draw more power with all these other things. I've got more fans. Um, so think about all that. That's why this the uh, power supply calculators are nice because you can put a lot of those peripherals in there, okay? So something like this, maybe I don't have too many hard drives. Maybe this guy right here, I'm going to have tons of mechanical hard drives, okay? So I can put at least three, uh, three and a half inch mechanical drives in here. I can put a bunch of two and a half inch. I can have dual uh, M.2 in here. Eventually, that computer will have this same type of CPU cooler in, okay? Uh, as you add more RAM to it, that draws more power. Um, so a lot of things you've got to be aware of, all right? So that's why uh, the calculators are, are good. You could, you know, do this uh, mathematically uh, if you wanted to. Probably easier to just use the calculator. And then when you get to the end of it, add 100 watts, all right? You want to have a buffer. It's always smart to have at least a 100 watt buffer. And if you're not sure what your end state's going to be, go ahead and add more to it. I mean, it's not going to, uh, really the price difference between some of these is not that big a deal. Now, obviously this 400 watt, you can get these pretty cheap. This PV over here, which I don't really recommend, um, that guy there, you can get uh, super cheap. All right, so by being able to get these, uh, you know, different power supplies to go from here to um, most of you are probably going to need at least 600 watts, okay? Some of you are going to need something like that. Um, all right, let's go back and look at some uh, more connectors. So 24 pin connector, basically this splits 20 and 4, but 24. That is on your motherboard right there, okay? And as well as that guy, so you can see it. Um, this will connect on here, and there's another little, uh, um, I don't know if you call that a tab, but uh, you got to make sure you line these up right. And then if you look at the design of this, it's also, um, can only fit one way, right? So that is something also to make sure, okay? Most of these 300 series motherboards, at least we'll say everyone I've seen, uh, these are 24. Now, something like this gaming computer down below, um, by HP, that's another story, what its power supply is. Or if you watch a channel, you see me talking about Dell Vostro or Dell Inspiron 3670. It has a eight pin connector, so you have to buy an adapter. But like I said, we're not really gonna talk about that. All right, so other things you're gonna see on your uh, power connector. Now these are uh, these are MOLED connectors, all right? So uh, back in the day, these were super popular and uh, you know, a lot of times, depending on your fans, uh, you may connect um, a string of fans like that via a MOLED. Um, sometimes, well, pretty much all the time I use these, I get not only the lights and I get the fan blowing. Um, sometimes when I just use my uh, connectors on the motherboard, the system fan connectors, I only get the uh, the fan going. So... Um, but why do I say that? Um, you know, every time you use these MOLEDs, you're drawing some power, right? So whether it's fans or uh, older star style hard drives, you're going to draw something. So newer style uh, hard drives in solid states, uh, 2.5 inch solid states that is, they use these uh, SATA uh, power here. And uh, so that's what you're gonna use these for, uh, for connections. Um, you may even uh, use them to connect a, uh, a drive, a Blu-ray drive, uh, DVD drive, uh, things like that. All right. So what else can we talk about? All right. So um, other things to consider with the power supplies. Now, I've left this the way it looks just because there'll be, you know, folks out there like, oh, that just is not, not real clean the way he did that. Right. Um, yeah, these are... Uh, these computers, you know, ain't for, uh, they're not really for show, right? I'm uh, always doing a lot of uh, game testing on them, switching out components, 
doing this and that. Sometimes I just leave some of the cables on the front side. But uh, know that uh, other reasons to select a uh, uh, semi-modular, fully modular um, power supply is just to be able to hide those cables, okay? When you get this big jungle jumble of uh, power cables and stuff, um, they are uh, usually, you know, a lot of them are going to come up through the back, right? And you're going to make your connections through uh, the different uh, openings. And, you know, that doesn't look too bad. But on the other side, um, can be quite a pain in the butt uh, to tie all these cables down. I, it's not really a pain in the butt. It just takes some time, right? And, uh, you know, then uh, as I change out components a lot, I'm always uh, disconnecting uh, things and... Uh, so we're spending a lot of extra time with cable ties and things like that. So sometimes I just I just leave it like it looks. But uh, you will want to clean that up, okay? So, all right, folks. So, uh, you know, just to summarize this, there's a lot of stuff to look at, right? So um, that's why I'm going to say I recommend the power supply calculators, all right? So before you go into that, know what motherboard you want. Know the CPU or your, let's say, in-state CPU, okay? Know what size case you're going to go with. Have an idea how many fans you want. Um, and, you know, fans with lights fan, or just uh, fans in general, okay? Have an idea how many hard drives you want to have. Have an idea how much RAM you're going to go with. Um, then go to the calculator, let it spit out some number to you, and then add at least 100 watts, all right? So really not that big a price difference to go from, a, you know, if it said you needed 400 to go to a uh, 500. If it says 500, not really that big a price to go to 600, and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, right? So um, the worst thing to do is later on, knowing that you really needed another 100 watts and it was only five dollars more and you didn't get that power supply okay and now you got to go back and disconnect everything so that is a a bit of a hassle uh no doubt um so let's talk about one last thing um you know i kind of just summarized but something i didn't talk about now if you boot your computer up um and it's running good and then suddenly you get heavy into gaming and then the next thing you know, your computer reboots on you, all right? That's a good time to go back and look at how much power you actually have for your system and if you calculate it right. Because what's going to happen a lot of times is, uh, let's look over here, okay? So if I had this computer um, and it's recommended, I think, 500 watts for the GTX 1070, and that's overall system power, right? This thing only draws like, I don't know, 150, 200 some watts probably. Um, but all the other stuff's going to add up, okay? And then when you start really um, going crazy gaming-wise, you're drawing the maximum amount of power. Um, your computer may just reboot itself, okay? It'll go to a black screen, and next thing you know, it reboots. Doesn't seem like anything's wrong, uh, except for the fact to reboot it. And then you go back into gaming, whatever, Um and then maybe this happens to you again. Um, that's a good sign that you do not have enough uh, power uh, to power your system, okay? Um, and a lot of times you could be off only by 50 watts. You could be off by 100 watts, all right? Uh, and there's other things to look at. And we're not really going to talk about it. But, uh, you know, there's a difference between an 850 watt with the uh, 80 plus symbol on it. And buying something, um, well, one of these guys that, you know, may not have it. Actually, that one has it. This one does not have it. Uh, that guy does not have it. So, uh, this is a lot more efficient. And, uh, you know, that's something uh, to be informed about right there, right? So, you may be able to get better results out of this one versus an 850 watt that doesn't have the 80 plus so uh just things to keep in mind and uh you know going back to the graphics cards know what kind of graphics card you want to have uh what its power requirements going to be what its connectors are uh very important 
CPU wise, knowing if you want to overclock your uh, CPU beyond, uh, you know, just a regular overclock, um, in which case you may need an extra uh, CPU connector, okay? So having just four might not cut it. You might need uh, a three by four. So that's going to do it for this video, folks. Hope you got something out of it. And uh, thanks for checking out the video. Please like, please subscribe.